Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. If you're familiar with this channel, then odds are you've probably seen me cover the infamous Lorelei softlock. In the first generation of Pokemon, there are many things in the game that the player can exploit to put themselves into a really bad situation. One of these things is the AI of enemy trainers. They would always prefer to use moves that are of a super effective type, even if the selected move isn't able to inflict damage. When you combine this with the fact that the enemy trainers had infinite PP for their moves, then things can start to get out of hand when healing moves are involved. Lorelei's first Pokemon is a Dugong that knows rest, so under the right circumstances it was possible to trap the player in a never-ending battle, where Dugong heals faster than it can be damaged. This gets even worse when you take into account that Lorelei's room cannot be exited without winning or losing the battle. So if you saved here, you might put yourself in a position where this never-ending battle is the only thing that your save file can do. However, this was eventually fixed in the final game of Generation 1. Surprisingly, this very specific situation was considered such a problem that for Pokemon Yellow, Lorelei was given special AI in order to prevent this from happening again. This makes Lorelei the only trainer in the entire generation that has unique AI for selecting her moves. And that brings me to the topic of today's video. Since the infinite battle can no longer happen in this version, I wanted to find out what would be the next best thing. Even if it can't go on forever, I think it would be interesting to see just how long you could keep the player stuck here using the game's own mechanics in unexpected ways. A long list of steps isn't going to be necessary this time. All you need to know is that for each of these scenarios, you will be required to save the game inside of Lorelei's room, with a very specific party of Pokémon while standing on the tile that is furthest away from her. We want to arrange this as if we plan to hand the cartridge over to someone and tell them to deal with whatever the save file presents. Also, the player's bag will be entirely empty for all of these. In Generation 1, key items can be deposited into the PC, so unlike all future games, you can completely cut off access to things like HMs. There will be no way for the player to reclaim their key items until they exit the Elite Four chambers. And finally, something that's important to note is that the battle animations will be turned off, and the tech speed will be on the fastest setting. Obviously, if the goal here is to see how long it would take someone to speedrun the escape, then we need to test everything with the same settings they'd be most likely to use. So with all of that in mind, let's start with something pretty absurd. For this first save file, the player loads into Lorelei's room. Upon checking the party, they will discover that they have six level 100 Mewtwo, and all of them are frozen. It also might not be apparent, but there is something else that's pretty special about them. All of them have perfect individual values, and maxed out effort values. What that means is that they all have the best possible stats that a Mewtwo can have in Generation 1. Why does this matter? Well, it's because that that means they'll be able to take a lot of extra hits. With nothing to do but to go into the battle, the player will quickly discover just how obnoxious this particular situation is. Because these Mewtwo are frozen, they are completely unable to attack. If you weren't aware, the frozen status in Generation 1 is incredibly broken. Unlike all future games, there is no chance of randomly thawing out each turn. The only way to cure it is to either use an item, get hit by a fire-type move, or have the opponent use Haze. In this battle, none of those things are possible. Lorelei will never switch out her Dugong, and its moves are Bubble Beam, Aurora Beam, Rest, and Takedown. There is literally nothing for the player to do but to mash the A button, waiting for Dugong to KO all six Mewtwo. And because we have the best possible stats, that's going to take quite a while. By the way, some of you might be wondering why I specifically chose Mewtwo for this. I first considered the Pokémon Lapras and Slowbro, who are pretty bulky and have the typing to resist some of Dugong's moves. But as it turns out, Mewtwo's overall stats are just that good in this game. It actually doesn't even matter if it has a resistance or not, it's still the best option for forcing the battle to go on for as long as possible. Chansey was pretty close to being chosen due to its huge HP and special stats, but its physical defense is so incredibly low. If it wasn't for the fact that Dugong knew Takedown, then I'd almost definitely would have used Chansey for this instead. And before you try to suggest Gengar, who is immune to Takedown altogether, that's not going to work either. Even with the modifications to her AI, Lorelei still knows that the move wouldn't affect a ghost, so she'll just never use it, and will end up hitting Gengar with stronger moves anyway. 
But with all of that stated, it's time to answer the next question. Now that we've set up an unavoidable tedious battle, we need to find out how long it will take the player to escape. Because Dugong has the possibility of falling asleep and landing critical hits, RNG can greatly affect the result here. Because of this, I ran through the scenario three times, mashing the A button to skip every text box as fast as possible. For this experiment, the timer will start when I hit continue on the main menu, and the timer will stop as soon as the player blacks out from losing the battle. In my first attempt, the battle took 22 minutes and 32 seconds to finish. For the second, it was 23 minutes and 19 seconds. And for the third, it lasted for 23 minutes and 31 seconds. With this, you can get a rough idea of how long this battle takes to get through. So in the case of this scenario, the player's save file is completely cut off from everything until they sit through around 23 minutes of tediously mashing the A button. While this is certainly an annoying situation, it's not exactly the worst thing ever. So next, we're going to make some changes to try and extend that time even more. For the next scenario, the player will find that they still have a full party of Mewtwo, except this time, they will not be frozen. When checking their moves though, they will find that Mewtwo doesn't know any damaging moves and instead has four status moves. Thunder Wave will paralyze and occasionally stun Dugong. Double Team will increase Mewtwo's evasion. Flash will lower Dugong's accuracy. And Recover will heal Mewtwo for half of its max health. I don't think I need to tell you that using any of these moves will make the battle against Dugong take much longer than 23 minutes. Going into Lorelei's battle with these conditions, we now need to explore the two possible ways that this battle can be approached, and figure out which one of them is the shortest method to escape the Elite Four Chambers. Method 1 is to have a single Mewtwo use moves until it can use Struggle. Method 2 is spending every turn switching each Mewtwo into Dugong's attacks until all of them are fainted. While the first one might seem like a pretty sensible idea, it ends up being a lot more miserable than you'd expect. You may have noticed, but as a part of this setup, I made sure to max out the PP of all of Mewtwo's moves. It will take 120 turns before a Mewtwo is capable of using Struggle. In order to waste Mewtwo's PP as optimally as possible, you just need to make sure that Recover is the last move you use up. This is to ensure that Mewtwo can last as long as possible when it can finally use Struggle. On my first attempt, it took 10 minutes and 6 seconds to defeat Lorelei. However, the Mewtwo fainted from the recoil damage on her last Pokémon. While Lorelei's battle may be over, the player is still trapped in the Elite Four Chambers. They have no choice but to go forward into Bruno's battle and do the exact same thing with one of the remaining Mewtwo. However, this struggle strategy will reach its end once the player has to battle Agatha. In Gen 1, Struggle is incapable of hitting Ghost-type Pokémon, so when it comes to Agatha's Gengar, there is absolutely nothing you can do aside from mashing the button and just hope to get lucky enough for her to send out Golbat. You see, Agatha actually has a very tiny chance of switching her Pokémon every turn. If she can do this and send out her Golbat, you then have a tiny chance of her attacking with Toxic. If the player can get their Mewtwo badly poisoned, it will not take long before the entire party is wiped out, taking you out of the Elite Four. Compared to the first scenario, RNG can affect the result a lot more. This is especially because of Agatha. Even if she does switch into Golbat, she still has the chance of switching to another Pokémon afterwards. The first attempt took a total of 27 minutes and 22 seconds. The one after that was 26 minutes and 34 seconds. The third was 29 minutes and 13 seconds. As you can see, this situation is able to waste a few more minutes compared to the last one. It's not too big of an improvement, but it's an improvement nonetheless. Now next we need to go back and see what would happen if you instead went with method number 2 for this party of Mewtwo. Switching out every single turn is incredibly tedious and requires the player to be a bit more attentive to what's going on. Even with animations turned off, the time it takes for the game to switch Pokémon adds up quickly. Something that also must be kept in mind is that you need to switch out in a way so that the final Mewtwo is left with low HP. Obviously, you do not want to risk having the Mewtwo use too many stall moves, once there isn't anything left to switch to. The first attempt at this method ended with a time of 43 minutes and 10 seconds before I got out of the Pokémon League. The second was 44 minutes and 53 seconds, and the third was 42 minutes and 21 seconds. Since this clearly takes a much longer time than method number one, there is no reason to ever go with this, unless we can make some adjustments to method number one that would make it take longer than method number two. 
Currently, there is actually one change we can make for the first method, though. So to end this video, we're going to go ahead and test that for our final answer. Like I said, method number one goes on until Agatha's Golbat uses Toxic on every Mewtwo. A way to prevent this would be to start the scenario with all six Mewtwo being paralyzed. Paralysis would also make it take longer to deplete all of Mewtwo's moves. So putting this into practice, if you were to, for some reason, try to use nothing but struggle all the way to Agatha's Gengar, it would take you about an hour before the entire party faints. The time I recorded was 58 minutes and 44 seconds. I didn't do any more attempts after that because it's incredibly clear that this is now much slower than method number two. So what does all this nonsense I've been talking about mean? If you were to save the game in Lorelei's room, with a full party of the game's strongest Pokémon, all paralyzed, and knowing nothing but maxed out status moves, you can temporarily cut off access to just about everything in the game. Then, assuming that someone is doing this with the game's fastest settings while paying close attention to what's happening in-game, it would still take them around 40 to 45 minutes to escape. Because the most optimal strategy here is to just switch every turn, there is absolutely no reason to ever bother using a single move here. It's not quite annoying enough to want to erase the entire save data, but it's still pretty funny that you can use the game's mechanics to cause something like this to happen. But that's gonna be it for this video. My name is Picaspery, and thanks for watching.